What's up guys, it's Dem here, and um, yeah, we're back again with another amazing tutorial. I say we, it's just me. <laughs> but this tutorial was actually found out by me and my friend, I'm not going to say his real name, but he goes by Goatee and Snood on the internet. Bit of a dodgy character, don't want to get too close to him, might lose your money. I'm joking. I'm joking. Chill out. But what this tutorial is actually about is tunneling Metasploit via an SSH tunnel. And you may be like, uh, what? What does that mean to me? And um, what it basically means is that you can use a router, just a normal router, because most routers these days have SSH like turned on. So you could, so you could connect to just a router and then have access to everything behind the firewall. So it basically smash his firewalls wide open Um I think we should just get straight into it it's really simple guys and um, I'm kinda kicking myself for not finding this early because I was doing all kinds of crap like trying to run Metasploit not on the router but trying to get into a server behind and messy very messy guys Um one word of warning is you can't actually run mmap through this I don't think so you'd have to do I don't know some magic to find out what their IP address is, or you could just ping through, because usually routers use the same kind of range, and why does this message box always come up? <laughs> uh, don't show this message again, you bastard. Okay, so let's get straight into it. Uh, first we'll set up Metasploit, as you can see I've got Metasploit console here, and I am running this in Windows. The technique is kind of the same, but instead of using putter, you just use the command line, and if you're using Linux, you pretty much know what you're doing anyway. So we're just going to start off by typing set G, and what set G does is sets a global variable, and uh, the variable we're going to set is proxies. So um, all you have to do from here is first tell it what type of proxy it is. So it's going to be a SOX5. SOX5 is all in capitals if you didn't know. Then we do a colon, and then the IP address. So that's going to be one two seven dot 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 one. You might be like, well, that that's localhost. Why why you go localhost? And uh, that's part of the SSH tunnel, which you'll see in a second. And um, then we're just going to do it on port 8080. You can choose whatever port you want here. I'm just using port 8080. It doesn't make a difference. In fact, let's go for port 1337 just to prove it. Uh, then we're just going to hit enter. And now that's set the proxy in Metasploit. So now this is lined up to go through the localhost proxy. And... Uh, well, I don't have a proxy running on localhost at the moment. So what we're going to do is fire up putty. If you don't know where to get put it, literally just Google it. It's so easy and uh, it's portable. It's just a one application thing. So in here, what I'm going to do is type in the IP address of my router. I was going to do a virtual server because it's the same concept, but I'm just going to go ahead and show you a real-world example. Um, obviously here, if you were being a bit dodgy, you'd go and get someone's default passwords and all that. All that stuff that I definitely don't do. <laughs> Then we're just going to go into this SSH tab right here. We've just put in the IP address of whatever you want into attack. I am not condoning anything bad. First, what you're going to do is click Dynamic. Um, there's all I can't remember the difference between these, but Dynamic basically means you're tunneling to the server. I think Remote is reverse tunneling, where you can have a service running on your laptop and it acts like it's running on the remote server. Not going to get into that. And here, the source port, we're just going to do 1337, the one that we chose before. Click Add, and click Open. And then here, it's going to connect to our router. And then we're just going to log in. Um, and now we're logged into the router. This would probably be with default using email passwords, or if you've keylogged something, or you they're just stupid and use the same password for everything. And they type slow. Um, <laughs> What I'm going to type here isn't actually, it doesn't really matter most of the time, but for my router, in its current state, you can't actually do anything, yeah. Um, but if I type SH, I get an actual BusyBox shell, and now I'm just going to type top. All top does is gives you a constant process list of what's going on, and that's just to keep the connection alive. Uh, so now, we can actually load up an exploit, so this is running through the proxy now. Um, I don't really know how to prove this. Uh, we could fire up Firefox, I guess. Yeah. Um, I'm just gonna prove that we are. This proxy is working. We are connected some, f to something, so we'll just do manual proxy settings. One three three seven. Okay, okay. And let's head over to Google. And as you can see, it loads up. So we are running through that proxy now that we've set up that SSH tunnel. 
And I'll just set those settings back to normal. Otherwise, I'm going to be confused later why my internet isn't working. So, that SSH tunnel is now working. So, we're just going to do the standard thing. We're going to line up a uh, exploit. I'm just going to go through. I'm not actually exploiting anything here. It's just more of a concept. And you can use it however you want. But I'm just going to do for some Windows SMB PS exec. Uh, one word of warning with this guys, you can't actually use reverse TCP attacks because obviously if it does a reverse TCP attack it's just going to hit the router and the router is going to go, well I don't want this and just bin it. So you can only use bind TCP attacks, which if you were going across the internet would be a problem, but think about it, you're behind their firewall at this part point. So yeah, it's not that difficult. So we're just going to set the R host to my server, just because then I know we're going to get something back. And uh, by default, it uses a reverse TCP payload. I don't know which one, but we're just going to set payload to my favorite Windows slash interpreter slash bind underscore TCP. Uh, I'm not going to put any login details because I'm not actually exploiting it. And if we just type exploit, as you can see here, it's actually connected to the server. It's tried logging in, and obviously, because it doesn't have login details, it's failed. But this is working. We have gone via an SSH tunnel to a remote machine. Um, I think I'm going to line up another demo later guys which I'll upload where we'll actually be going onto a different network via a computer just to prove it because uh, me and Gutty and Snood um, tried this from school and it worked so yeah not on a school computer towards the same one here we SSH'd into my network. Just to cover my ass, in case anyone out there is watching going, I'm going to tell on you. <laughs> Thanks for watching again, guys. Hope you find this interesting. I really do. This is so useful. I can't explain how useful this is. Just to exit my router. And, uh, yeah, thank you for watching. Remember to hit that like button if you did find this interesting, which you probably have. If you know what that is, what that does there, you're probably just frothing at the gills like I am right now. So yeah, I'm going to say thank you one more time and I'm going to get going. See you later. Bye-bye.